but it is my distinct honor to present my friend, one of my best friends, my advisor, my mentor, and my brother, Darnell L. Moore, with the 2015 Audrey Lloyd Founders Award. an award in the name of Audrey Lord, who taught us that our silence would not protect us. Um, I'm also wanting to lift up so many other black, queer, trans, gender non-conforming people who did not only fight for our sexual and gender rights, but they fought for the rights of us to be black and brown and free in this country. So I lift up Audrey, I lift up Essex Hemphill, oh my gosh, June Jordan, um, who, who else? There's so many people from whom showed it. Joseph Bean, uh, Paul A. Murray, whose name we don't often reference, was critical and pivotal to the civil rights movement. Um, and there are so many others. I, I'm honored also because my mom is here with me. Who's Woo! So And I am because she is. So far before I had an opportunity to, um, to learn fancy words like intersectionality, <laughs> third wave feminism, um, long before I had an opportunity to really be shaped and molded by the work of black feminists, black lesbian feminists like Cheryl Clark, um, who was my mentor, like M. Jackie Alexander, who was Audre Lorde's friend, who was my mentor, like Gloria Joseph. Um, far before I came in contact with them, I came in contact with this woman. She, it was through her womb, her city, that I came into this world. The life world of a black girl who had me at the age of 16 and now is sitting here. <laughs> giving so much to the world. Um, But what I want to say, I guess, um, I'm, I'm so thankful that this gala is called Rooted in Resistance. I go to a lot of events that's disconnected from the lived experiences we have um, in the world. Um, at this moment, there are young people who are turning up on campuses across this country. Yale, Princeton, uh, University of Missouri. There are people in Cleveland and, 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 and Baltimore. Um, and right now, in places across this country, um, spiting and standing up for justice, for us, yes, yes. even as we're sitting here at this gala. Um, and they are fighting tirelessly, and despite how we, what we might think about the present movement. What I want to say is it seemed to me that we were so excited about the fact that you had largely a black and brown contingent of LGBTQ people who are also at the head of Black Lives Matter. So we should talk about Alicia Garza, a black Nigerian sister. We should talk about Patrice Cullors and, Ali and, and, um, and Alicia Garza. I'm messing up names here because I'm nervous. Um, but guess what, y'all? Black LGBT people, they didn't just show up in the movement today. They didn't just show up last year after Trayvon Martin died. To, to say that would be a disservice, one, to a revised, revisionist black history, and to an American history. In fact, we have always been here, and we have always been fighting for our people. The second thing I'll say, while some of us find it easy to sort of lift up our fist when we ask for folk to talk about Black Lives Matter, I also know that the things we say when we're, not, when we're not in spaces like this the sort of respectability politics that evade our, our public work. The fact that we got young people doing some, some things that you know, might make some of us look bad because of the way that they're talking and the way that they're posturing. How dare you speak back to a politician? 
How dare you question the market and the corporate class when they are the ones largely we're relying on for funding? How dare you talk back to a nonprofit industrial complex that will tell you that if you don't do X, Y, or Z, you won't get your grant? How dare you? No, no, no. This is a time when we are saying, oh, no, how dare you? A ride to, and I have to say this, when we organized that ride, we took 500 people with us across this country. And I said, you know what, not only will this not be sort of Diane Nash Bay or Rustin 2.0, where we're invisibilized, but this time out for us to coddle and play, with, play games with our lives. I mean, the fact that we have to say Black Lives Matter insinuates that it does not. And that's why people are up here sitting in the president of Princeton's office right now saying we're not leaving until you take Woodrow Wilson's name, who was a racist, off of these buildings. That doesn't seem, I know y'all not feeling that right there. But this is the type of movement that we're in. And if I'm gonna stand here and accept an award with Audrey Lord's name on it, I need to tell the truth, because our sister Audrey would have said the same thing to y'all. So my, my word is thank you to you, Corey and Quincy, for all the work you've done in the city, even if it was thankless work, even if it went underfunded. Thank you for keeping people alive and fighting for them. Thank you to all of my brothers and sisters in this place, black and brown, gender non-conforming, queer and trans, without funds or with, who do work despite applause and accolades. Thank you so much for loving us, for loving black people, for loving brown people, for loving folks who others would not love. I pray that your work will continue. And I pray that this community will see that work and back it 155%. Thank you so much. Y'all.